Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can download files in place of WebAssembly applications. For downloading files, we are going to take some help from JavaScript functions. We are going to create a JavaScript function in which we are going to pass file type, base64 string of the file and name of the file. From file type and base64 string, we can create file data URL, which we are going to pass it to our fetch API and we'll convert the response into blob. Then we are going to pass that blob in some lines of code, which will help us download the file. We are first going to create a link and then we'll pass the blob into that link and the mime type, which is the file type that we want to download. We'll also pass the file name to download property so that browser knows how to name that file. And then we're going to add that link, the link that we created, we're going to add that link into the document and ask our JavaScript function to click on it. Once this JavaScript function clicks on it, then the file gets downloaded. Once the file is downloaded, we do not need this link on the document. So we're going to remove that link from the document. In the previous episode, we saw how we can upload profile picture from the client and store that in the database. And in this episode, we're going to pull that information from the database and use that JavaScript function to download that profile picture on the client. In the second section of this episode, we're going to see how we can download a file which is stored on the disk on your server. So this is a web API. I need the file path of the file which is stored on the server. And then we'll pass that file path into file stream. We're going to also need file mode and file access. Then we'll convert that file stream into memory stream, memory stream to byte array and byte array to base64 string and we'll send this base64 string back to the client so that we could use that JavaScript function to download the file. And in the second section, we'll see how we can download that docx file from the server. So let's make some code changes to download the profile picture and docx file from the server. In the previous episode, we learned how we could upload profile picture on profile.razor component. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how we can download that profile picture. For that, I have added this download profile picture button, which doesn't really do anything. Let's go ahead and make some code changes so that we could download this profile picture. For that, I'm going to go to my client project and I've already created a JS folder in which I'm going to create a JavaScript file that I'm going to name as site.js and in which I'm going to create a function that I'm going to name as download file, which takes three parameters. The first parameter is going to be mine type, which is going to be the file type that we would like to download. And then the second parameter is going to be base64 string format of the file. And the last parameter is going to be name of the file. Now that we have mime type and base64 string format of the file, we can create file data URL. For that, I'm going to say var file data URL, which is going to be data colon plus the mime type plus now we need to pass the base64 string format of the file. For that, I'm going to say semicolon base64 comma plus base64 string that we're going to receive from the client. Now that we have file data URL, we can call fetch API, which is a built-in API for JavaScript, in which I can pass file data URL. Now I would like to get the response in blob format. For that, I'm going to say response. And I would like to convert the response into blob format. And then I can pass that blob to some lines of code, which will help us download the file. And in this section, I'm going to create a link. And then we're going to add that link in the document, click on it, and then remove it once we're done clicking on it. To create a link, first I'm going to say var link, and then I'm going to use window document create element to create a link in which I'm going to pass anchor tag here 
and we'll have to set some properties of this link. The first property that I want to set is href in which I'm going to set window URL, create object URL in which we are going to pass the blob, which is holding the file information. And then we'll also have to pass the type of the file, which is we are holding in mime type parameter here. Also, we'll have to name our file that we can set in download property of link. And we are getting the name of the file as the third parameter. So I'm going to set that here. Now we can add this link in the document, click on it, and then we can remove that link because after clicking, the file should get downloaded. To add the link, I'm going to say document body append child in which I'm going to pass the link which will download the file for us and then let's click on that link and this will download the file for us after clicking on it the file will get downloaded once the file is downloaded then we do not need this link in our body so we can remove that for that I'm going to say document body remove child in which I'm going to pass the link here now this JavaScript function should be able to download the file if you're passing MIME type, base64 string and name of the file. Let's go ahead and add the reference of the site.js in our index.html so that we could call this function from a razor component. For that I'm going to go to my index.html here and add a script tag which is going to refer to site.js. Now let's go to our profile.razor component from which we can call our JavaScript function. To call JavaScript function, we're going to need JS runtime. So I'm going to inject IJS runtime and name it as JS runtime. On click of that download profile picture, I have mapped a local function, which I'm gonna call it as download profile picture and nothing is happening in this function right now. So let's go ahead and call invoke void function of JS runtime, which is going to call that JavaScript function. So the first parameter for this method is going to be name of the JavaScript function that we would like to call. And then the list of parameters that JavaScript function is expecting. So the first parameter is the MIME type, which is going to be image forward slash PNG. The second parameter is base64 string. To get the base64 string, I'm going to split profile pick data URL property in half by this comma so that we could get the second part of the base64 string format of the file. To get that, I'm going to say string array base64 string and then I'm going to split this property so that I'm going to copy this and split this in half by comma so that I can get the second part of the string and pass it as parameters. So I'm going to say base64 string and the second index of that string array. And the last parameter is going to be the name of the file that I'm going to name it as profile.png. This is an async method, so I'm going to await it and then change the signature of the function to async class. That's all we need to do to download the profile picture. Let's go ahead and run this and see if that works or not. I'm going to refresh my application and I'm going to click on download profile picture and that will download the profile picture of John Smith. So this is how you can download profile picture from the database that profile data URL is stored in the database. In the next section, I'm going to show you how you can download a file which is stored on the server on its disk. In the previous section, we learned how we could download profile picture which is stored on the database. In this section, I'm going to talk about how you can download a file which is stored on the server. For that first, we're going to need to create a web API call on the server side. So I'm going to go to my server project and open up my controller. 
And here I'm going to create a HTTP get web API call. So I'm going to copy this method and paste it here. I'm going to name my web API call as download server file and also change the name of the function here. And this web API call is going to return base64 string format of the file that we would like to download from the server. And the file that I would like to download is stored on this location. So I'm going to get the file path from its properties. So I'm going to copy this file path, go back to my web API call and create a variable called as file path and store that as string. I'm going to add an app rate here so that it's not throwing errors for the backward slashes in the string. Now we're going to use file stream to open that file so that we could copy it into memory stream. For that, I'm going to create a variable called as file input, which is going to be file stream, in which we'll have to pass the file path. And we'll also have to pass file mode, which is going to be open. And we'll also have to pass file access, which is going to be read. You're going to need to add a namespace for this file stream, which I've already added. If I scroll up here, then you can see I have added system.io. We'll have to add that namespace to access file stream constructor here. Now we need to copy this file stream into memory stream. For that, I'm going to create a memory stream that I'm going to name as memory stream. I'm going to create a new instance of it. Then I'm going to call file inputs copy to async method to copy the file stream into memory stream. This is an async method, so let's await it. Now we can convert this memory stream into byte array. For that, I'm going to say var buffer and then say memory stream dot to array, which will convert the memory stream into byte array. Now we can convert this byte array into base64 string and send it back to the client. For that, I'm going to say return statement. And here I'm going to call convert convert dot base 64 string in which I'm going to pass the buffer. Now this web API call should be able to download this file from the server. Let's go ahead and call this web API call from our razor component. I've already done that. If I go to my profile dot razor component, I am calling this download server file method on click of this download document button. And on that method, I'm calling this download server web API call, which is giving me HTTP response message. I'm reading the string into base64 string here. Again, I'm calling this download file JavaScript method in which I'm passing the MIME type. For docx file, this is the MIME type. If you want to figure out the MIME type for your file, you can go to this link to figure out MIME type for your file, I share this link in the video description. And the last thing that I'm passing, actually the base64 string that we are getting from Web API is the second parameter that I'm passing in this JavaScript function. And then the last thing that I'm passing is the name of the file so that browser knows how to name that file. Now that's all we need to do to download a file from the server. Let's run this and see if that works or not. I'm going to refresh my application. And now if I click on download document, it's going to download that docx file on my client side. So this is how you can download file from database or from desk, which is stored on the server side. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.